Thanks for tuning in to this episode of I Have Something to Say, where subject matter experts are unafraid and unapologetic about sharing their perspectives regarding issues that impact our lives. They speak up because basically they give a shit. So if you're tired of canned dancers and want to finally hear real people cut through the BS and talk about real issues, this is the podcast for you. I'm your host, Sami Heyman Marrero from Irvinder, and behind our mixer is our producer, Chris Mayoka from You Do You. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special episode of I Have Something to Say. And I want to call in and draw in all of the entrepreneurs that are watching us right now because I'm, I'm so happy to have as our special guest my friend, Servola Fraser. She is the CEO of Motivate Enterprises, and she was part of a select group of instructors that were part of the Center for Micro Entrepreneurial Training, two-week, intense, oh my gosh, drinking from a fire hose is, is, is an understatement, business training for entrepreneurs at all stages of their um, entrepreneurship journey. And you kicked it off, Servola, and welcome because I was like, <laughs> OMG, I learned so much and I'm like, I have to have you. I have to have you on the podcast. <laughs> welcome. And how are you? Well, thank you so much, Sammy. I am super excited to be here. Thank you so much for the awesome welcome. And you're absolutely right. Everyone who goes through the Seedman EBA says it's like drinking from a fire hose. Uh, (laughs) But if you come out of it on the other side, it's two weeks of training. We have back to back to back experts in different aspects of entrepreneurship. And I got to say, while everyone was awesome, and it's not because (laughs) you're my friend, I'm not being I just feel like I learned so much from that introductory session, right? Mm -hmm. That first morning that you were basically doing what you do, right? This is your business, your line of business. You're an entrepreneur yourself. Um, And just the gems that you shared regarding articulating your best client ever uh, were, were to me, mind-blowing, and it really helped me better understand the opportunity to scale my business by focusing on those clients that really, you know, make my life easy, right? It's all about light lift, you know, high reward and really enjoying what you're doing and not feeling like, oh my God, why did I choose to be an entrepreneur, right? But tell me a little bit about how, how you became part of the CMET nation of this, of this group of instructors um, and also, how did you um, first conceptualize your line of work and and um, became so passionate and driven to develop leadership and motivate um, others through your coaching and through the programming, right? And the instructional, um, uh, how do you say, programs really that, that you right. have as part of your offerings? Well, I mean, that's, that's a lot <laughs> there to share. <laughs> So let let me do my best to just bring it all together. So I met the founder, Joe, Joseph Simmons, at a event where I was just being a part of just a lot of the things that are happening here in the Central Florida area. And we struck up a conversation and he invited me to become a part of something that he was working at the time through another organization. And as he began to move things forward, and this is why it's so important for us as entrepreneurs to build relationships right? Because we met and then months later, almost a year later, Joe was like, I've got a list of people who I think are really great experts in this and they truly add value to people and I want to reach out to them. And I was at the top of that list. And and I believe that the reason why I was on that list to begin with was because of my desire to build relationships and add Mm -hmm. value, bring that value regardless. And that's something that I've learned in this space as an entrepreneur that's really important. So I jumped into this process with Seedment because of the work that I do with Motivate Enterprises. You know, I found it Motivate because I had this desire, this passion to be able to help small business and and mid-sized businesses grow and thrive and scale. But what I begin to notice is that 
there is this space in the work that we do where we have gaps and those gaps lead us to this place to where our businesses fall apart. And a lot of people struggle because they don't know that these things are causing their businesses to fall apart and not be what they exactly what they want it to be. Because many of us don't want to divert funding to it or what have you. So we just don't think it's important. We can survive, excuse me, survive without it. And the truth is, yeah, you can survive without it, but you can't thrive without it. Mm-hmm. And, and so our goal is to help businesses become thriving, thriving businesses. And so we focus on four pivotal areas where businesses struggle. That's in their leadership. That's in how they communicate. That's in cultural engagement and in performance. And you'll find that every single business, the research supports it, that businesses that fall apart typically fall apart because of poor leadership, because the entrepreneur who was at the helm did not have leadership capability or skill set in order to take their business to the next level. And leadership is not something that everyone is born with. There are some people who are natural born leaders, but everybody is not, it's not a skill that's just for the select people. You can grow and develop your leadership skills, but a lot of entrepreneurs are not familiar with that. And I also found that a lot of people who go to school, but school doesn't prepare you for the real life of business. <laughs> exactly. I think, I think that a lot of people struggle with that thought and that concept because they're like, well, I learned this in school, but how does that relate to here? And then when you sit down with the entrepreneur, you're saying, yeah, I learned all these things. However, I didn't know how to put these things into practice. And so mm-hmm. part of our work with our coaching and with our consulting is looking at the entire organization and saying, okay, yeah, you learned this in school, but here's some of the other key elements that you need in order to create this space. I love doing it. You know, my background comes from government contracting, but I stepped into doing my passion work, my real work, because I have a desire to help businesses get to the place where they want to be. I believe that in order for us to build great communities, strong, thriving communities, we have to be able to have strong and thriving businesses that exist within those communities. So Sammy, I'm sure you can hear the passion in my voice. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. And the thing is you bring a worldview too, because you're not, you, you've tried, you've lived all over the world. I know. And yes. And and how do you, (laughs) yes, I know because you come from a military family, right? And so then you, you've seen how other, and, and I'm sure that there are a lot of similarities in how people operate in different countries even, right? And, and how, how that is reflected in the entrepreneurship ecosystems that are, are within those communities. Is that true? I agree with you. Yes. There are a lot of similarities. I think, you know, Americans work hard, right? We work hard. We're, you know, we're driven by performance and by a lot of aspects, but when it comes down to the, the basic nuts and bolts of entrepreneurship and that journey, that art of being an entrepreneur across the board, even across the nation, there are so many, and even across the world, there are so many key components that are similar. We're more similar than we are different when it comes down to entrepreneurship because a lot of entrepreneurs need a tribe in order to be successful. And many of us struggle with wanting to include people in our tribe because of broken trust from broken relationships, or because we just don't know who to go to. We're just not, we just don't know what we don't know. And so we need those people who are in our spaces, who are trusted advisors, who can help to navigate us to that space to where we can create this business. I don't think anybody, no matter where they're from, steps into a business and says, oh, I don't want this business to be successful, or the only way this business will be successful is if I do all the work. Well, that doesn't work. And we know that, that we all need help to get to where we want to go. And for all those long rangers that are out there, I am so sorry to poop on your parade today, but we need to, we need to understand that it takes, just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a same similar concept, a tribe to build a business. Yes. Yes. And, and that's what I felt walking into this training right? That I was all of a sudden, it's like, wait a second, let me find out that I'm surrounding (laughs) myself by 
by all of these amazing people from very diverse backgrounds with different life and business experiences that, you know, what I really appreciated the most is that it was real time and real life applications, right? Oh, yes. That it was bringing that theory and those notions that we have about how to run a business right and, and either course correct the stuff that we're doing that eh, may not be as, as good as we think, right? Then validating the stuff that we were doing that, that was working and is working. It was like, oh, okay, good. I'm doing that right. Right. So it's a confirmation mm -hmm. and then presenting new ideas, new concepts, new tools, even right. Um, to be able to further the work and scale. And yeah, I wanted, yes. Uh-huh. Well, I was just going to say that I agree with you. I think that a lot of things that entrepreneurs do are very great things and you need that. You need someone to tell you that you're doing great. You need someone to tell you that you're on the right track. You also need someone, as you said, to create that course correction for those areas where you may have weaknesses. I always tell people that if you suck at it, delegate it, delegate mm -hmm. it, get someone who's a subject matter expert at that and delegate it. You need to know enough to make sure that they're doing a good job, but delegate it because as an entrepreneur, you need to spend the time doing the business that you actually signed up to do, that you want to do. That's what leads you to have that passion to do this work time and time again. Yes. And so I, I want to, um, there was so much that you shared during that morning that, I mean, <laughs> we, could, we, we would need like a series, right? To be able to cover it all, uh, which I guess is another conversation. I was going to say that. Let's do that. <laughs> but. To me, the big like that I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like an easy thing for me to do. And, you know, being in business for 14 years, I think that it's because I have enough information to be able to articulate and define my best client ever. So talk right. to, just explain what this is about what it is to define your best client ever. You know, in, in this space where we look at putting our businesses together and developing our business plan, we have this, what most people call is an avatar. And I, when I first heard that term avatar, like any other entrepreneur, I got stuck. I got stuck because I was like an avatar, like who is that? And why do we have an avatar? And, and I always felt like an avatar was something that we can easily disconnect from. And as if it's mm -hmm. not going to be that real person. And so mm -hmm. when I went to the drawing board to start creating content to help entrepreneurs to get to that place where they can thrive, you know, I was like, what is the best way to describe this? And I thought about best client ever, the person you want to do business with over and over and over again, the person you wouldn't mind duplicating. Like I want 500 best clients ever because they are <laughs> a part of my tribe. And I think every single entrepreneur, if you were to ask them, you know, would you want the best client ever to be duplicated? And the answer would be a resounding yes. Obviously, if I want to grow a thriving business, I want to have a whole, whole bunch of them. But the reality mm -hmm. is, it's hard for us to describe that person when we're looking at it from a perspective of an avatar, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you start thinking about that, then you start can say, well, who are the people that had the best experience? Not they had a good experience, but I had a good experience with them as well. Right. Yes. And so I think thinking of it from that perspective, we recognize that it's a two way relationship. It's not this one way, but it's a two way. So I had a good I had a good, you know, um, I had a good process with this person. We got along well. We build it. We build a relationship out of this. Um, we can go back and forth and we support each other. And you feel like you're a strategic partner with them. They don't just seem like a person that's an in and out, like it's transactional. So when we're thinking about the best client, that's a relational component. And, and I think that that helps us as entrepreneurs to be able to find that person. And what I tell people is if you're already in existence, go in and look at the people that you've already been working with and look mm -hmm. at those key things that you love about them. 
and pull out those characteristics. You know, what do they like to do? Why is it so easy to work with them? What, you know, do, do they pay on time? Right. <laughs> That's a big thing. Like we like to get yeah. our money on time. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, when you, are they responsive? Do they respond to your, do they request? haggle? Do they haggle? Right. Which is, yeah. You do know? they value your, do they value the service that you provide and the pricing points that you offer it? Or are they always trying to drive you down to the lowest price, which causes you to not only, in some cases, you're not breaking even, even in that, because I think a lot of entrepreneurs go down to the core pricing, which means they're not breaking even, they're actually giving those services away, right? And if you're, if you're not a not-for-profit, you mm -hmm. are a for-profit business, you don't need to be giving your services away. You need to be right. getting a profit off of those services. So your best client is not going to be that person that keeps trying to drive you down to the, you know, bone for, for what you offer. They're going to value what you bring to the table. They're going to celebrate what you bring to the table. They're going to brag on what you bring to the table. They're going to keep talking about it, talking about it until you can't get enough of them. And you, they're the people that you want to get on the phone with to tell them about a new service that you created just thinking about them right? Yes. And so that gets your wheels to turning. You start to think, okay, well, who is that? Who is that person that I've been doing business with, excuse me, that I want to keep doing business with that man, if they could get into a machine and clone themselves, I want them <laughs> to clone themselves. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. And so that's what I like business owners to be thinking about. Who would you clone? And here's the thing. There are so many business owners that are starting out in this process. And so for them, I say, let's just look at the basic premises. Who do you want to work with? You can't work with everybody. You can't serve everybody. And I know that a lot of business owners, I'm just raining on your parade right now because you're thinking, Savola, how dare you say that? Of course I can serve everybody. But if you are a solopreneur, there's only so much time that you have that you can allocate to every single person that you provide services to. So that means you can't serve anybody. You can't serve everybody. So the mm -hmm. great question is, where do you want to start? And, and I tell people that don't start at the bottom, start somewhere in the middle. You know, when you're looking at your pricing point, don't start at the lowest price when you start out, start somewhere in the middle, because many of us are, we're going to, if we start in the middle, then that creates the space where we are financially solvent in our businesses earlier in our businesses. But if we start, oh, thinking, oh, because I'm so new and I have, I don't have all these things, well, I can't charge that much. Well, think yeah. about it. If you don't charge it now, you're going to wind up charging it later. You need to start becoming comfortable with where you're going to charge. But your best client ever, they're going to pay that price every single time because they value what you bring to the table. And that's why it's so important for you to get to know your best client ever. Yes. Oh my goodness. When you, when you, and of course you were, you went more in depth and Absolutely. Took us through that process of understanding and defining it and creating, you know, um, like almost like a criteria list. Right. And so oh, yeah. it, it's, it's a relationship like any other, it's like dating, right? Exactly. You, you know, it's like you have your these characteristics that you're looking in an ideal partner because it is it is a partnership and it is a two way street. And so when you presented it that way, you know, I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is like, yes, it seems like such a simple concept because it is such a simple concept. The thing is, you have to put pen to paper and create your own scorecard, right? It's almost like a scorecard. But then also you need to live up to those expectations of, of the relationship, right? By, yeah. by you know, uh, meaning what you say and saying what you mean, right? And, and, and yeah. also acting on the deliverables and making sure that you're providing value, um, as, as you're presenting it to this best client ever. I, I agree Ooh. with you. I'm telling you that um, when you, after that morning and we have the break, I sat down and I listed all of our clients, right? And, and I was like, I, I'm, I'm glad to say that 90% of our clients, you know, are best clients ever, right? They have these guys. And I was able to draw these characteristics and I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes. They all are allow us to be creative and nimble, right? They're nimble. They're not like 
like so strict, right? That you don't have that wiggle room to be creative, right? They all um, are, are a little bit cray cray, right? They like crazy ideas and they're open, right? To, to new stuff, to creating stuff that have never existed, you know? Um, they don't haggle, they're, they're right. fair, right? They give reasonable timelines, they pay on time, right? They, they're, actual, they're advocates, they're looking for opportunities, they call us. And they're like, hey, yes. are you game for this? Like, you know, they come up with the cray cray ideas too, right? So right. It's, it's like this mutual give and take. And I'm like, this is really cool. This really puts into perspective as we move forward and talk to people to, to like when you're dating, right? When you meet someone to be on the lookout for those telling signs, right? That, that yeah. you're, aligned, you're aligned in head, heart, and that gut feeling too, right? That tells you this this might be a good prospect. Is that the, that's pretty much what I that was my yeah. takeaway. You know, I, mean, you I think that, that mm -hmm. I agree with you, Sammy. You know, a lot of people, when you look at the basic premise of an avatar, it leaves out that emotional and relational connection. And one mm -hmm. of the things that I talk about in developing your best client ever is intersections and understanding where you guys intersect. I think that it's important for you to understand those, you know, how how can they, not just you create the best customer experience ever, but how do they create the best business experience, you know, ever for the both of you, right? And you were talking to, oh, they're not gonna haggle. So think about it like this, when you get on the phone with that client that you know is always trying to drive you down to the lowest price, what does it do to your energy? What does it do to, you know, your ability to show up as 100% mm -hmm. to offer them the greatest services that you can possibly do? You don't even want to talk to them about new initiatives because you're like, oh, they're going to try to haggle me down. And, you know, they're going to treat me like a used car salesperson and they're going to try to talk me off of my price. Well, that's not the type of people that you want to be working with as an entrepreneur. And you don't have to. I think a lot of times we feel like we have to settle because we're trying to grow our businesses. We feel like we have to settle for everything and everybody. But it's important that you're patient in this journey as an entrepreneur and that you recognize, yeah, there are some places where some spaces and places where you're like, hey, I just got to take all that I can get. And we understand that concept. But you also have to be able to understand when you get to the place to where you can write the list and start weeding people off and say, you know what, I no longer wish to continue this relationship. And why? Because this is hard on me. Having a relationship with you is the dread of my, you know, some people would say is the pain of my existence, right? And you don't want those types of people. You don't want to be doing business with someone that you're going to dread jumping on the call with or, it, you know, going to a face-to-face -face conversation that you're going to be constantly weighted down. Because listen, you didn't get into this work to feel enslaved to it. You got into right. this work because you wanted to be able to freely express and freely give as an entrepreneur into this process. So it's important for us to understand that we have to empower ourselves. We have to set ourselves up for success in this entire process. And I love, Sammy, that 90%, are you kidding me? Yes, I love that. I know. 90%. Absolutely. I know. So, I, I, you know, but to me, that just shows that when we start to develop and grow our businesses and once we can start pinpointing that, then it helps us to be able to attract those people to us. It helps them to be attracted to us too, because we know how to show up. See, when you mm -hmm. know who your best client ever is, when you go into spaces and places, you're, I tell people, you're like a magnet. They're mm -hmm. drawn to you and they're like a magnet. You're drawn to them. It's like they've got these light bulbs clicking up and you can mm -hmm. see the light bulb and it's like the both of you can, it's like something about you. Have you ever went into a space and somebody came up to you? I have, it happened to me quite often. <laughs> and they'd be like, there's something about you. I just want to connect with you. I just want to get to know you. Well, that might be an indicator that they're noticing that best client ever persona coming off of you, right? Yes. And so, And so you You've got to recognize that, you know, in this space as an entrepreneur, I mean, there's so many different nuggets. There's so many different things that we can talk through in that, that I think are really important for this process. But I, I will say this, I think that entrepreneurs really need to narrow down who it is they want to reach. Who is it? What does that experience look like? Not just for them, right? You do have a responsibility 
to show up and give the best quality service that you can service or product. It doesn't matter. The principle mm -hmm. is still going to be the same, right? You still have to deliver quality so that mm -hmm. that client wants to come to you time and time again. And here's the thing, they get to the place where you can trust them and where they can trust you. So if you're fallible, because we are, are fallible as an entrepreneur and you slip up, they're not going to walk away from you, right? Mm -hmm. Because you develop that relationship because they are the best client ever, right? Yes. So they, they have, you have that trust that's been created in that space. And so I think it's important for us to understand, think about who do you want to work with? Not just on the money factor, but on the relationship factor. Think about the, the actual time that you have to commit to them. And are you dreading those conversations? There's some of you that are going to have to let go of some of your clients as you start to hear this podcast and, and just start thinking through, um, yeah, this, this, this company, they're always trying to drive my prices low, but I feel like I have to have them. Now go look for somebody else. Go look for that client that's going to work with you well and you get an opportunity to just jump into the work that you do with them and really cause them to thrive. And then guess what? They're going to cause you to thrive because they'll support you just as Sammy said, and you support them. And it's that, that, that um, I don't want to say give and take relationship, but it's reciprocal, right? Mm -hmm. It's a reciprocal relationship. And that's what we want more of in this space is entrepreneurship. Well, and it becomes a friendship, though. That's the thing. It's, yes. They become part of your tribe. We're going back to the beginning of this conversation. Here we go. We to, that we need to build our tribe, and your clients and customers are part of that, too, right? Absolutely. That sense of loyalty, loyalty, solidarity, commitment, encouragement, all of that, you know, I, I have a, I had a client, well, and there's still a client here in central Florida. Um, but the, the director of the department left and moved to Texas. And now she's, um, uh, head of a, an entire department in, in Texas at, um, at an educational institution. And she took us with her. Right. So now I have a client in, in Dallas. Isn't that awesome? I right? love it. I and love so, it. And so to me, it's like, that's the best client ever. She's one of the yep. best client ever. I've been working with her for seven years. Now she's in another institution and she took us along. Right. And there so because their trust is there and because I kind of can read her mind too. Um, at this go. point, because we've been working together for but so see, long. That's, right? that's what I'm talking about. Sammy is putting yourself in a space where you've not just you know, looked at them as a checking box solution, but you've actually developed a relationship with them on this journey that you mm -hmm. recognize that you guys are interly dependent upon each other. It's mm -hmm. not this independent, it's interly dependent upon each other. We all need each other in this space. And when you're looking for that best client ever, you need someone who knows that they need you as well as you need them. This thing is because we care. Right? Because right, we care. absolutely. So there's care, there's genuine affection and caring involved, right? Because I I my, I care about her looking good, right, and shining, and she cares about the the safety, you know, of my business and the growth of my mm. business. I mean, she she knows my kids, right? When right. I I was when I was first starting my business, I remember one time. Uh, she calls me and, and she's like, I need to see you right now. Can you come down for two hours? And I'm like, I've got, I've got, it's already after school, right? I, the kids are home. I, you know, and she's like, bring them. And so when I got to her office here, this is before she moved to Texas. When I come to her office, right? She's very poised and serious and like, you know, an executive at, at a big company. Um, when I got there, she had bought snacks and she created like a little cave environment under her desk. So my kids, and we gave them like a, a iPad. So my kids were playing under her desk while we worked for two hours. They had the best time. I love you know? it. And so then, you know, and so then now she always asks me about the kids and it's like, I, it, she feels like family in a way, right. you know, I know it sounds corny, but oh, I no. do. I have mad love for her and I worry about her and, and vice versa, you know? And so anyway, I, I think that that's, um, that's, you know, part you're talking of my, to... that's part of my avatar, right? I right. want to, 
I want to love on you people, right? So that's, <laughs> the kind, that's the kind of relationship I want with my clients, you know, and, and I want to feel the love too. Right. So, yes. And Sammy, that's, that's the whole point. Every single one of us is going to have those unique characteristics of relationships that we want to build with our best client ever. And we need to know what that looks like for us individually. This is not that a robotic check the box and it, once I fill these things out, it's just going to be the perfect thing. No, you've got to look deeper into what your core values are. There's some values and you need to know if they align with your values, because if they don't, then this not, may not be the most fruitful relationship. They may not be that best client if they're going to always cause you, you know, your value is going to always be conflicted in that relationship. So there's a lot of pieces that need to be looked at and considered in this entire process. I love it because what you're talking about is community. It's understanding that, yes, you may be different on some fronts, but yet you still come together to be a part of each other's, uh, uh, sorry, to be a part of each other's tribe to grow thriving businesses. I have a question. So then what does a breakup look like? <laughs> I love that question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're going to offer people tools. Right, right, right. right. Let's, just, let's just give you the other end of it, right? right. So what does a because you don't want to, you're not like we've broken up with clients, but I want your, your opinion right. and your, you know, what does that look like? Cause we don't want to antagonize or create, yeah. you know, that vibe either. Right. Or bad juju. Mm -hmm. Um, so then how, what does that look like? And so for me, I, I, I feel it looks like a number, a number of things, but I will tell you the most, the most easy space for that to happen within. And that is not just a clean breakup. Now, there may become a time in a relationship with someone where you have to do a clean break because it is, I say a clean break happens at that point where it's an abusive relationship in business, where people are just constantly abusing <laughs> that relationship over and over and over again, and you just need to cut it off. And so that's a clean break. But when you're looking at where maybe there's just a lot of conflict within the space, you have differing values, but they're still a good company. You just know that you don't have the capacity or you don't desire to continue to serve them at that level. You don't have to. So I think that behooves us to create that seamline transition for them to step into that service. In essence, you don't want to leave them high and dry. So a breakup to me looks like this. It looks like you know your competitors, right? You know the people who are in that market space that would love working for a client like that. You've already had your fill. So connect them with those people. Do mm. that connecting process that says, hey, we're no longer going to continue to be able to provide these services to you based upon whatever reason. And that, but here are some companies that we believe are great assets to help you to take your work further. And we've already reached out to them and they are happy to have appointments with you to be able to allow this work to continue. And we will stay on to through this transition to make sure that what you're looking for transitions smoothly to this new person. And to me, that's what we need to do. You know, mm -hmm. it's because that's what's building a bridge in that business. You get rid of the client you don't want to have, right? You letting mm -hmm. them go to someone else who who has similar core values or who has a similar temperament or whatever it is, and you turn them over to that person and then you're free to move forward. But here's the thing, you didn't leave them hanging. So they're going to be like, Sammy or Savola took good care of me. They mm -hmm. said they couldn't serve me anymore, but they didn't want to leave me high and dry. So they helped me find someone to offer me the quality services that I still needed for my business right? Because the need is still there. And I think a lot of people, when they get fed up with those clients, they're like, shoot, bump this, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> and we have to be careful with that because as Sammy has said, that creates a reputation for us in the marketplace. And mm -hmm. we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we're not considerate of making sure that this relationship happens in the marketplace. Yeah, you may not want to continue to be in that big business relationship with them at that level, but don't sever the relationship. When I was younger, you know, we all have these things that we carry over from our, from our previous life. And so before I was married, 
I would have boyfriends and I break up with them, but I've mastered <laughs> the art of becoming friends after the breakup, right? <laughs> I mastered the art of becoming friends and I carry that over into business. Like if we're not going to continue this relationship, I'm going to master the art of being that friend that's going to connect you to the resources that you need in order to continue to grow your business. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts, that. Sammy? <laughs> I love that. It came back to the whole dating, right? Yes. Now we need like a dating game for businesses <laughs> it's totally totally hey there's another idea right so yeah <laughs> i love this so i i'm i'm so thankful that that we have this time together because to me it's like yeah. a refresher course and what we already you know um yes. but but condent packed into right this this half hour that we had together and i think it's very valuable because sometimes we're so um worried or um, focused on just landing the business that, that will just take anything, right? Yeah, and and yeah. it compromises, right? Your mental health yeah. sometimes, your yeah. emotional health um, and your financial health too. Yeah. Because sometimes you um, go low thinking mm. that, that, you know, at least I'm in, right. And then I'll deal yeah. with, you know, getting paid what I'm worth later on. And then, but you could be sucked into that, um, relationship that is not really beneficial for one, two, three years. And that's one, yeah. two, three years that you're kind of not, um, making revenues to, to the fullest potential, right. That you're not really maximizing your revenue, uh, capabilities, right? So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's really like a foundational um, conversation for any entrepreneur uh, to really listen to. So that way you don't shoot yourself on the foot by, you know, not articulating who your best client ever is or you aspire them to be if you're just starting. Yeah. And, you know, Sammy, I think it's good for the beginning entrepreneur, obviously, for obvious reasons. But I also think it's for the scaling entrepreneur. Who do you want to do business with as you're scaling? Because maybe as you're scaling, you have a greater level of capabilities that don't serve your current listing of clients. And, and you want to be able to know, well, who will it serve? Who can it serve? And who will value it at the highest level? And so it's an ongoing uh, continuum that you continue are looking for as you grow your business, who's going to be that best client. Because listen, you know, business, you know, we, we know that every dynamic of business that people are going to be at different levels and different spaces and places. And so today's customer may not be tomorrow's customer. Today's client may not be tomorrow's client, but how do you continue to set yourself up for success in growing your business as you grow as an entrepreneur, and that's always looking at that. I mean, I don't want you guys to be every week like stalking your best client ever list and be like, oh my God, right? <laughs> but what I would like for you to do is take a look at that maybe quarterly or annually and saying, am I doing business with people that I really want to be doing business with? Mm -hmm. You know, just does this work that I'm doing with these, with these clients make me have green lights to work every day? Yes. Or do I have, do I have some yellow lights or red lights? I want to get stuck in all the red lights to get to this client because I just don't want to deal with them. If it's yeah. turned into that kind of a relationship, then you may want to, you may want to have a conversation with them and transition them out so that you can move someone else in. Because if you're constantly saying yes to the wrong client, you're saying no to the right client. Oh my goodness. Exactly. There's that. That's it people. <laughs> That's it. That's a wrap. There's no more that. Yes, absolutely. The yes to the wrong client means that you're saying no to the right client. I mean, that, that, that pretty much encapsulates what we're talking about. Right. So listen, Servola, thank you so much. I know I'm probably going to see you later this week. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, cause we're always up to no good, right? To, uh, getting into good trouble. No, actually getting into good trouble. Um, yes, together. girl. <laughs> but um, thank you. Thank you so much because I know you're thank super you. busy. And, and uh, but I th th thought that this was so important to share. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you for your friendship, for being so generous with the knowledge um, that, that you have to um, impart 
you know, and uh, and with your life experiences too, because I think that that's what makes the difference that you've been there, done that, and that you can talk to it from a place of actually knowing there's no theory here, right? Um, yeah. It's actually, yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for, for being here with me today. Oh, you're welcome, Sammy. And thank you for having me. I can't wait for us to do that sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, coming soon. Part two, coming soon to a theater near you. <laughs> bye bye. I'll talk to you later. This concludes this episode of I Have Something to Say. We want to thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. We're on Spotify and iTunes as well. There's more to come next week. And remember, if you have something to say, it's time to speak up. <laughs>